and collaborating with Francois. His title is Definability in Non-Archimedean Geometry. Yeah, thank you so much, Carol. Uh, I have to say that I'm a bit afraid by the extreme diversity of, of people I say in the audience, so I hope everyone will find something uh, interesting. And uh, let me first explain uh, what I intend to do during this lecture. So uh, uh, my paper for the proceedings uh, is a wide panorama of applications of model theory uh, to non archimedean geometry in various ways. So uh, in this lecture, which is only 45 minutes, I have, I have to choose one. So uh, there will be a, a short, a quick introduction where, where I will present another uh, direction of application, but I will be very sketchy for limitation of time. Uh, so uh, I have to explain first what definability means. So this is definability in the sense of first order logic. So a language is fixed for from the start, so there are symbols for constant, function, relation, so basic examples are the ring language, the order language, and the order of the group language, for instance. There are many others, of course. And once we, once we have this notion of language, we can, uh, def can define what is a formula. So a formula is what you can imagine. You will, show, you, you will see one or two. And, uh, when there is no free variable in a formula, uh, it's called a sentence. And uh, given the language, there is a notion of structure, which is a set uh, together with interpretation for symbols. And you don't even require that the symbol of equality is really interpreted by actual equality. OK? And so uh, what's a definable set? So if M uh, is a structure for language, which means that I can interpret all symbols in the language inside M, a, set, a definable subset of M to the power N is just uh, uh, the locus uh, where this formula, which is supposed to be a formula with uh, certain variables Xi, break all. So the Xi is should be free variables, but maybe they, they may not occur in the, actually in the formula. Like you, when you consider polynomials in n variables, uh, there may be it may be the case that some variables do not occur in the actually in the in, in the polynomial. Right? So, uh, for instance, uh, this is the formula, and if I if I did uh, did it right, it, it should define the valu valuation ring of uh, the field of uh, triadic numbers uh, within uh, itself. And so this is a definable subset of this guy. So uh, sometimes it's useful to consider parameters. So uh, uh, if you have a subset of a structure, then one says the subset is A definable if uh, uh, one has to, the, form, the set is definable once uh, not only, maybe we not uh, a formula in, in the original language, but in the language uh, obtained by adding symbols, constant symbols to all parameters, in, to all elements of it. Okay? And definable functions will also play a role, and uh, they are just functions whose graph is definable. So that's for the basic. Uh, Notion of logic, but that's all right. And uh, so let me start by uh, early applications of, of model theory to pair fields that were quite spectacular. So uh, first one is due to Ax and Cochin and Herschel. So it's uh, something like 50 years ago. And uh, you, you start from a first order sentence. And then uh, you are interested to know whether it's true, say, the pair digits. And, uh, given the sentence for p large enough, and the sentence will be true or satisfied in the pair digits, if and only if it will be satisfied in uh, the field of uh, Laurent series with coefficient in fp. And as uh, 
you may have heard. This is a nice application to Artin's problem, Emil Artin, uh, not Michael, like uh, as it was said this morning. <laughs> and uh, once uh, 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 the WD is given, QP is C2D, which means that it satisfies the condition of being C2 in degree D, which means uh, every uh, polynomial, uh, homogeneous polynomial uh, of degree D in more than d squared plus one variable will have a non-trivial zero in QP, or be large enough, given. Okay? And this is uh, because this condition can be translated first of and one can consider more general languages that I, I, I will not enter this. Another spectacular uh, result is in the framework of definable sets. So you integrate on a bounded definable subset of the periodics, and you have a definable function. And you consider this kind of integral and uh, uh, the, the NFCON, which is uh, 30 years old, uh, states that this is a rational function in the variable p to the minus space. And this uh, had, uh, had an application, uh, saw the conjecture of Iguza of, uh, of, on, on, about the uh, uh, rationality of certain generating series, and it was uh, very soon, very quickly uh, used uh, to prove also rationality of certain counting functions of subgroup of given index, an important group, and so on. So this is typical application. And uh, something which is explained in my survey in my preceding paper is that, uh, in fact, uh, these two uh, beautiful results, uh, in fact, can be subsumed by uh, theory of uh, motivic integration in uh, the versions of motivic integration where, which, is, which are based on uh, definability. And uh, so these were, uh, they were developed. Uh, 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 various uh, such theories, which were, uh, I developed with Deneuve, with Raff, uh, Cluckers, and that also one which was uh, devised by Ruchowski and Kajda. And uh, this is uh, two applications to uniformity on boundedness statements. So these, uh, this kind of uh, uh, uniformity or boundedness statement, they are typical uh, applications of model theory. Okay? And uh, so let me end this introduction with uh, three uh, main examples so, uh, of uh, uniformity. So if you have identity between uh, uh, non-Archimedean integrals and uh, they are true in, uh, say, over QP, then uh, they will be true over FPT for P large and vice versa. And uh, OK, this uh, was uh, used uh, by Klöcker, uh, Stonehead, and myself. Uh, we, we, we show that this can be actually used uh, for the fundamental lemma of Ngo, so we, which was proved for FPT, and so we could uh, go back to QP for P large. Recently, uh, Clockers, Gordon, and Elchot, they also use a similar ideas, but using much more work uh, to get the transfer principle for local integrability, and this had a nice and very beautiful application because uh, to Arish Nandra's uh, work on uh, local integrity of characters, so this uh, was known of uh, characteristic zero, of QP, and they were able to transfer this statement of uh, FPT. And uh, there is also another uh, direction investigated by Kirkos, Gordon, and Richard, which is about uh, bounds. Uh, certain uh, orbital integrals, uh, when it's known that they are bounded, but when uh, people uh, I mean, uh, these people are Shin and, Temp and Templier, uh, could not know, uh, could not prove by hand, with their hands that they were uh, polynomially bounded in, with respect to power of, to Q, where Q is a carnality of the residue field, and uh, this kind of ideas provided such a bound. So, okay, now, uh, this is not what I'm talking about. I will talk about something different, uh, more striking, maybe, application, which is topological, and. Uh, uh, why is it striking? Because it's, it's not so common that model theory has something to say about topology. Okay? So this is joint work with, uh, with Yerushovsky. Uh, it's available on the, on the web. And, and uh, it should appear rather soon as a volume in the Princeton series. And uh, okay, it's quite involved. Its uh, final version will be around 200 pages. 
so uh, I will have to be quite sketchy to explain it. So it's about uh, 10 years in uh, non Euclidean geometry, this work. So let, let's start about uh, sets defined uh, by polynomials and about the complex numbers or the real numbers. And this is, it's very well known that they are 10. They satisfy nice properties, they are not wild at all. So you have, for instance, look, they are locally arc connected, they are triangle unreliable, they retract to finite polyhedra. They are locally contractible, and uh, if uh, you vary, vary them in definable families, say in algebraic families, then uh, you have uh, a uniformity result on the homotopy type. Okay? And uh, let's uh, consider the situation of a valued seed. So, uh, in fact, not really valued, but uh, with a revalued uh, norm, in fact, which is ultra metric, so typical example of the PID. So field of uh, Laurent series of say, the complex number. So uh, it's well known that if you look naively uh, because of, a, of, of the ultrametric condition, and then you get a, a space which is totally disconnected. So the topology induced by the norm is totally disconnected. So uh, the, the uh, device, uh, beautiful idea by Berkovich, which is to consider the Ber corresponding Berkovich spaces, space, so if x is, uh, say, affine, defined uh, as a question of a, poly of a polynomial ring by polynomials, uh, then uh, the identification is easily defined. It's this sign at first sight, but it's a set of multi multiplicative semi-norms on this ring that extends the given norm. So this is the Berkovich identification as a set. And, uh, as a topological uh, space, you just uh, consider uh, the topology induced by the product Tikhonov topology on, on, on this product. Okay? So this is a fine case, and uh, in general, you can extend it by gluing to, uh, to any other back Okay. And Berkovich proved that this space uh, identification has nice properties. For, for instance, it's out of, locally compact, locally pass connected, and it has now, the, the, its topological dimension is equal to the algebraic dimension. But uh, this does not cover all the tennis properties I mentioned before. Okay? And this was, uh, this is the main result of, of this work with Wachowski. So it's under the assumption that x has to be quasi-projective, even if it does not seem necessary. And uh, so we prove that uh, the identification strongly retracts to a finite polyhedron, is locally contractible. And OK, you have, we have more, more refined statements. And in particular, we have finiteness of number of homotopy types when uh, things vary in families. And uh, this is not only for varieties, but also for definable subsets. Uh, special instances of one and two were already known under some smoothness assumptions. OK, and now uh, I have to explain how this can be related to model theory, I guess. Okay. And for this, I, I will take a baby example. So uh, this is an example of uh, O-minimal structures. And uh, so uh, you take a structure which, you, 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 which, which uh, contains an order, a longer that contains an order. And uh, you interpret uh, this symbol as a linear order. And this structure will be said to be O minimal if every definable set is coefficient M. Of M, no, uh, here's the key point is that you consider not uh, 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 arbitrary uh, Cartesian powers of M, but just one dimensional M. Okay? It's a finite union you know, of intervals, so you have basic examples. Where you take the ring uh, language, so then you get. Over, for the, over the real, and the structure is the real number, then the definable set are actual uh, semi algebraic set. You add the exponential, then it becomes a very difficult uh, result by uh, due to Wilkie, and this has striking application to number theory that Jonathan Pila will explain uh, in his plenary talk. And of course, uh, if you replace, for instance, exponential by the sinus fun sine function, then you, you get something which is not because. Uh, okay, uh, sine with a sine function, you can easily define uh, the integers into the real numbers. And uh, okay, the integers, uh, they have no way to see them as a finite union of intervals. Okay, and uh, if you take any O minimal expansion of the real numbers, 
So this means uh, just uh, maybe adding more symbols, like the exponential symbol, but still being O minimal. Then uh, it's a fact, and it's the beauty of uh, O minimality, that they are, they are topologically, topologically tamed. They are all triangulable, they are refract to finite polydra, they are local contractibility, and you have finiteness of number of multiple types in family. So uh, this is the, topo the properties we are after, in fact. So we would like to do something like that in the virtual business. Uh, something important to note is that uh, this O minimal geometry not only applies to actual real numbers, but to any real closed field. So real closed field is, uh, is an ordered field uh, or, or field that satisfies the same first order uh, properties than the real numbers. Okay? And they, they, could, they can, could be, for instance, uh, non archimedian or non standard models of the, of, the, of the And you have other examples, which one which is very important for us, which is that of uh, order by divisible abelian group. In this case, uh, definable functions are just piecewise affine functions. So this is the world of piecewise affine geometry. An important issue is that uh, if we, in the case uh, you have a real closed field, which is non archimedian then uh, the unit interval, the closed unit interval, is no longer compact. Why? Uh, this is uh, easy to, to see. Uh, in this case, uh, you, will, you, you will have infinitesimals. That's, this means elements, positive elements, which are smaller than uh, any real numbers. And now you can, uh, if you try, you can cover uh, this, interval, this interval by uh, intervals of, uh, so call this, uh, um, infinitesimal quality epsilon, and we can uh, cover uh, this interval by intervals of, of radius uh, epsilon, and there is no way to extract a finite uh, subcovering. So, so this is this looks very bad because if if the unit interval is not compact, uh, what can we expect? But uh, this can be fixed by something called definable types. And uh, now I will introduce that notion, which is important for us, not only for uh, this uh, issue of uh, compactness, but for, for defining our main object, in fact. So uh, now there is some uh, model theory um, for, of that, for that, but it's also the reason why I'm here. So. So what's the type uh, in uh, ML, so M is a structure. So, so to, it's just an ultra filter on the Boolean algebra of definable subset. So what does that mean? So it's a substitute for points. And uh, so in fact, the only subset we are interested in M, uh, of ML is, are the definable ones. And so if you have a point, we, we have to know whether given a definable subset, whether it belongs to that definable subset or not. So if you have a point, and if you look to all uh, definable subsets or subsets that contain that point, you get a neutral filter. And so we define point now in the reverse way. Reverse way. So we consider all ultra filters on uh, uh, the Boolean algebra of definable subset. And this will be a substitute for point. But uh, inside this point, some points are better than the others. These are the definable ones because, uh, okay, arbitrary or ultra filter can be quite wide. And uh, now we have the definition, which is not, which is quite uh, elementary, but maybe not so easy to digest. So our type is, uh, so correspond to points to the n coordinates. So, but here we, we take so a formula with n first coordinates and M of the variable, which are, have, to, have to be seen as parameters. So uh, we ask the formula to be without parameters because we, we will get parameters by substituting uh, elements of in A into the yi's. Okay. So the definition is as follows. So given such a, a formula, there is another formula that depends on the type, which now has its parameters in A, such that each time I substitute uh, element bi is in the structure m, so now uh, I have this. And I, I want to, def to, to uh, 
uh, decide uh, whether uh, uh, this formula belongs to P. So this is an abuse of language. So P is a set of definable sets. So uh, I should uh, better say uh, the definable set corresponding to this formula belongs to P as it fits because I consider definable uh, or I should I say M definable subset, sorry. Uh, this will hold if and only if uh, uh, when I substitute the B as in 5B, this holds in M. So uh, what does that mean? I mean that I can check definably whether a given formula with parameters, I can check definably with respect to the parameters whether a, a given formula uh, depending on this parameter belongs to my type. So an example, so uh, you, you have the type uh, of strictly positive infinity numbers. So uh, this means uh, a formula will belong to zero plus if and only if it holds for small enough for all, uh, why small enough, for all, uh, no, yes, for all small enough. And then uh, if I take this formula x smaller than y, so uh, I get this. Well, why? Because uh, I have to know, uh, so if x is, 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 is an infinitesimal element, so it does not belong to m, no. And so it's smaller than a, every positive uh, element in m. And, uh, it, and it's a linear if and only if, so this means that uh, when y in m is strictly, y in m is strictly positive, if and only if y is uh, strictly bigger than x. Okay. I, I, I understand that it may be uh, a bit difficult to absorb if it's the first time you see that. And now there is a notion of definable compactness in all minimal structures. So a definable subset will be definably compact if any definable type p on z. So here there is some kind of duality. So uh, z, z is a definable set, so it belongs to P. If you think geometrically, the point corresponding to P belongs to Z, okay? As a limit in Z, and what does that mean? Well, that means that uh, there is a point, a point in Z, which is a limit, and that we want, you require that any definable neighborhood of X belongs to the two. So this is a natural notion of having a limit. And now uh, everything is all, is all right again. So if I have a definable subset of MN with M O minimal, then it will be definably compact if and only if it's bounded and closed. So compact is not good notion, but definably compact is. So we, here we see some uh, that in non-standard uh, models, uh, uh, adding definability conditions uh, allows you to, 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 to consider, to, to do some topology. Okay, so this was a warm up, the baby case. Now uh, we consider uh, value fields. So it's more general setting than the Berkowitz setting. Now we consider a, a value field, non opinion value field with evaluation uh, of arbitrary rank. So it take, the valuation takes value in an arbitrary order of Abelian group. Okay? And uh, we first want to, to, to define. Uh, 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 a modern theoretic version of Berkowitz spaces in this framework. So I, I, I'd like to, to really uh, uh, insist on the fact that to get the application that I presented uh, in the beginning of the talk, so where the norms are rank one, and we, we still, uh, it's still very useful to consider the case of arbitrary uh, value groups to, to really uh, use uh, fully uh, the powerful tools of modern theory. So now we will uh, use, uh, I have to pre make more precise what's the language. So, okay, it's, there are three kinds of variables now. Running one, run, uh, the, the first one running over the valid feed and then you get the ring language. You have also the review feed and you take the ring language again and uh, uh, the value group, so you take the order group language. So on gamma, uh, you have this language where definable sets are, are piecewise uh, affine sets, okay? And uh, you have two more symbols, a uh, valuation map, which relates the value field to the value group, and the residue map that relates the uh, uh, value field to the residue field. Okay? Now there is 
in this specific setting, there is a notion of, of definable set. So there are three sorts of, of variables. So it's not exactly what I defined first, but it's very similar. And the point now is that uh, uh, so I, I, I write a definable set of VK, uh, given a formula. Uh, but uh, OK, I, I, and this, yeah, there is a lot of abuse of notations here, because maybe uh, uh, it leaves in products of copies of, of capital K, small k, and gamma. But I, I still keep to k because otherwise uh, it would be not necessarily possible to fold, to maintain. So uh, vk can be a subset of, say, of, of some Cartesian power of this guy. But what I want to stress is that, uh, in fact, uh, one can also look to, to points in uh, extensions of, of capital K. And uh, I will not be very precise, but now we will see definable sets more as functors. And our aim that for any variety of definable set, one can will define a new space we have, which in some precise sense is a pro-definable topological space, and that is very closely related to the Berkowitz identification. So I start by defining uh, what is a P1 hat. Concretely, it's a functor given a valued field, uh, so it's a set of points. It's just a set of closed balls set where centers are rational points in P1 over L. And uh, the radius uh, belongs to, uh, the, um, to the value group uh, tensored with, uh, with Q. So here I have infinity because my valuation is, is written addictively, so uh, the valuation of zero is infinity. Okay? So uh, it's a nice set, so uh, it's a set of balls, so they are described by, by letting x and alpha vary. Okay? But of course, uh, uh, for given alpha, different points x may give rise to the same closed ball. So it's a question of, of the set of, P, 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 uh, of, of, the, of the line times gamma infinity, gamma infinity is this guy, by some definable equivalence relation, which just says that you uh, two points belong to the same closed ball. Okay? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Your stuff is some number somewhere? Is that no. Um, what, what yeah, yeah, no, but I understand. Uh, I, will, I will answer your question, OK? I, no, I, I am answering your question now. So have you, uh, have you P1, uh, have you, have you for ga gamma as a functor? So I defined what is gamma of L, for instance, here, OK? So um, the notation, there will be some, OK. Um, because now, now my, my, my definable objects, are, they are functorial, OK? And uh, in fact, uh, uh, there is a fundamental result of Askel Ruchovsky and McPherson, which describes all definable quotient. And uh, so, roughly speaking, uh, it's enough to, uh, to, to consider uh, spaces of lattices. So, you add new uh, source, new variables for corresponding to, to space of lattices. Okay? To be honest, uh, there are some other sources to, to add also, but uh, I, I, I will not mention them. They don't play a role here. Okay, and so we will consider this external long wave, where we con consider a more definable set with respect to that external. Wave. So we have more sorts, so more more variables. But if we uh, stick to uh, what we are really interested in, so uh, Cartesian powers of the valued field, then we don't create any new definable subset. So that's fine. Okay. In the Berkowitz setting, uh, P, P1 is more complicated. There are four types of points, and there are the bad uh, points, which are type 4, which are a bit ugly. And uh, okay, I don't want to insist, I don't have enough time. And uh, oh, do I have how much time do you have? Okay, yes, I should show me a video. Okay, so. Uh, uh, the three authors that, uh, in a monograph a uh, few years ago introduced a notion of stably dominated type, which is written on this slide, but which I have not time to, to explain to you. 
and uh, the stable completion will just be the set of all the, all the, these L-definable stably dominated type. And uh, this extends to any variety of the functor. And so we have a kind of, kind of we have a canonical embedding of V to this, this V hat, okay, which we call the stable completion. And what is really uh, fundamental in our approach is that given any definable set V, the, uh, the, 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 the space V hat is strictly pro-definable. What does that mean? So pro-definable means a definable set in the pro-category. And uh, strictly means that it may be represented by uh, uh, an inverse system where the transition mappings are subjective. Okay? And in dimension one, it's much better. It's even definable. Uh, this is easy to understand in the case of P1 because in case P1 we have the space of balls and the space of balls uh, you can easily define this space see that this space is definable once you uh, in the space in spaces of lattices okay and so we can mimic Bacardi's definition and we can put a topology on the hat okay and uh, now, uh, since V-hat is pro-definable, we can consider definable types on any pro-definable subset of V-hat. Okay, I define definable types on definable sets, but uh, here you have uh, inverse instead, and one can uh, also define definable types on V-hat. So this is a bit strange because V-hat is a space of defi definable types, and we consider now definable types on, this, on the set of definable types. It's a bit, a bit strange on side, but this is life. And now we can uh, we have a notion of the being definably compact, which is copied on the uh, on the no corresponding notion in the minimal case. So uh, we have a notion of compactness, and uh, we have also a notion of connectedness. So we have a notion of path. So uh, we may consider uh, a definable uh, continuous morphism between uh, intervals on V hat. So an inter a closed interval is definable in gamma. But here there is a small subtlety because, subtlety because uh, we are used to, to glue uh, that we, when we glue intervals, it's still an interval in the usual world. Here it's not the case, but that does not matter. It's still a definable set. And so uh, I consider I obtained by gluing a finite number of closed intervals, so this is fine. And then I have a notion of definable paths on the R, which we do not have at all in the Darkovich uh, setting. We could have a very wild uh, path in the Darkovich setting. And so using the definable paths, uh, it's easy to define notions like being definably path connected, which means that just uh, two, uh, two points are connected by a, by a definable uh, path, and notion of definable homotopies, uh, definable, st definable strong attraction, and so on. OK? And so we, we, we have a nice comparison uh, or Gaga uh, statement. So if you start with a variety of our valued field, any, any rank, yeah, the valuation, then uh, it's proper if and only if its completion is definably compact, and it's connected if and only if its completion is definably path connected. Okay. Uh, okay, I have time to, 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 to present this slide. So uh, there is a first tenure statement. So, uh, in V hat, inside V hat, we can have pro-definable uh, subset, uh, which are uh, pro-definably isomorphic to a definable subset of some Cartesian power of gamma. Okay, so this means that uh, without taking topo topology in account, five minutes. Okay, uh, they are definable. Six. And here the theorem says that in fact they are not topologically wide, which was not obvious a priori. And uh, what, this is our main theorem. So we start with a classic projective variety and a definable subset. Then we can, uh, uh, there is a definable strong retraction of its hat uh, on two uh, uh, subsets, which is definably homomorphic to a definable subset of some power of gamma. So this is a, a so to speak, an object that belongs to uh, piecewise uh, linear or affine geometry. It's not actually really uh, gamma to some power. With it's, it's, uh, the power is itself a finite set, which is definable. Okay? This is because uh, to take account Galois actions. Okay? 
And in fact, uh, given a finite number of definable functions, one can uh, choose a reflection to respect this function. So this is our main reason. Uh, I will skip. Uh, uh, I will skip uh, the sketch of proof, which is very sketchy because the proof is something like 60 pages. And uh, now back to Berkowitz paper for the uh, very last minute. So if I start now with a, with a valid field where the valuation is rank one, so contained in, in the real number, and uh, we consider the, the space we have, but not with uh, parameters in F, but we, we take a, a slightly different structure. And uh, if we consider uh, F tilde, which is algebraically closed, maxi complete, maximally complete extension of F, okay, with all these conditions, then we have a natural functional mapping of f the point of the hat to the arm, which is continuous and subjective. And this is what does the deal once it's rigid enough. So if we have proved nice result about the hat, we can transfer them to the arm. Okay. But you see the main difference between the arm and the hat is that the arm is a natural topological space. And the hat is a predefinable space. So it is really a functor. So it, it, uh, it is, in some sense, easier to deal with. And now uh, our main result, which uh, was already stated at the very beginning. So if I take a quasi projective variety, then uh, I have all these properties. And for instance, this uh, finiteness of number of homotopy types in families, this really comes from a model theory. I mean, I have, we have to know that uh, uh, we live in a predefinable world to be able to have uh, uniform bonds uh, in, with respect to parameters. And, uh, 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 I, I would like also to, to point out that uh, uh, usually, uh, in many cases, uh, uh, for instance, in Berkowitz's work, where it was able to prove uh, local contractibility in certain cases, uh, basic uh, use is made of uh, resolution of, uh, of uh, the Young theorem and alterations and things like that. So you use, use nice models in the in sense of geometry to prove tenuous results. So this is. Uh, perfectly uh, acceptable uh, approach, of course. But here, uh, I think what uh, another aspect which I find very interesting is that there is, we make no use at all of any uh, uh, such result. Even in the curve case, we don't use semi-stable reduction. We just use, uh, we project the curve on P1 and we, we just uh, work uh, directly using definability. Definability is really, for us, a substitute uh, to uh, semi-stable reduction, for instance. OK, I think it's, uh, I think what I'm going to do. If you if you would uh, have been able to find a canonical one, uh, they, they may be um, no, I, I'm not saying the wrong way. Our construction is not canonical; it depends on choices, and uh, we we. we, we Not to have to do such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> you stressed finiteness of the number of homotopy types. Do yeah. you know the finiteness of the number of, hom of homeomorphism types is actually false? No, I don't know. But uh, we are not able to. We are not able to prove it. I think. I think. I think we are not able to prove. Thank you.